So what's new? Yeah. I've said in the past that pay-per-views with special stipulations such as Extreme Rules, TLC, should in theory be really hard to make bad. Because if anything else, you could butt-fumble and stumble your way through some spots and pull matches off. You should never have a show like an Extreme Rules or a TLC be anything lower than passable or good. That should be the bare minimum standard. You really have to have to be a special kind of sucking stupid to be able to make it something worse than that. Oh no, leave it to the WWE to do just that. TLC 2015 was very, very bad. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that has this sentiment. But even worse than it just being bad was that it mirrors what Raw so often is to me is a three-hour waste of my fucking time. It's three hours where I sit there and wonder why I still watch this crap. It's three hours of my life where I wish I was doing something else. It's three hours of my life that I'll never, ever get back. And that's TLC in a nutshell, and that's the WWE in a nutshell. So often, it's a colossal waste of fucking time today. And this show most certainly was. And after what happened on Raw Monday night, you see just how much of a waste of time TLC was. Well, let's actually talk about the show here. You got the tag title match, a ladder match to kick things off. And this was the highlight of the night to me. By far the most entertaining match of the night. And probably the only match that I would classify as actually being good. Although, again, as I'm looking at it, you've got the New Day... Entertain the breaks off of me, especially Xavier Woods. You've got the Usos. You've got the Lucha Dragons. It doesn't really feel like there's much of a story here. There doesn't really feel like there's much of a purpose for these three teams in particular to be wrestling in a ladder match for the tag titles. There's no real story. It doesn't feel like there's much of a purpose other than just to have these other fools go bumping around so the New Day can shine and the New Day can go over. And if that's the case, fine. Ultimately, I think the biggest purpose it served was to start off the show, to set the table, and that's pretty much what it did, and that's all you were going to get out of this. And frankly, to me, everything after this match was pretty much downhill on this show. Like, you've got Rusev versus Ryback. Why are these two facing off against each other? I mean, seriously, I don't even care what type of weak-ass kayfabe storyline logic you want to use here. Why are these two wrestling each other? Why are these two wrestling each other here in a standard wrestling match, furthermore, at a pay-per-view like TLC? Rusev is a part of the League of Nations, and leave it to Vince McMahon to go back to the well of racist-ass Woodrow Wilson's progressive ideas of the 1910s. Now, what's next? The League of Nations is going to spawn off into a new group that we're going to call Birth of a Nation. Oh boy, I can't wait to see that group and how they pull off the black face. No, seriously, Rusev Ryback. Why are these two facing? Because if anything, you would think Rusev should be feuding with somebody that's a part of Roman Reigns' family. Either the Usos or, I don't know, maybe somebody like a Dean Ambrose. Where does Ryback fit into this? But even more importantly, why in the fuck are Lana and Rusev back together again and we're acting like nothing ever happened to begin with? So you wasted all that time during the fucking summer just to waste our fucking time now. And they wasted our time with this match. And then you got the U.S. title match. You got your WrestleMania 29 World Heavyweight Championship match on this card, this time for the U.S. title. So in a little under three years, Jack Swagger and Del Rio went from battling for the belt at the biggest show of the year to battling for a mid-card title that this company now doesn't give a shit about because it doesn't involve John Cena. And oh my Christ, what a waste of time. Now we're trying to make Seb Coulter seem like a sympathetic figure. We're still trying to go with the We the People crap with Jack Swagger because I had a little bit of momentum a year plus ago when it was a whole group that included, oh by the way, Cesaro. Another match that was a colossal waste of fucking time. And if this is what you were going to bring ADR back to do, then why waste his time? And why waste your money? It's stupid. And then you get the Wyatt family versus the ECW Originals. It's these four fucks over here that the next time they meet a shower they like will be the first time that they meet a shower that they fucking like. Uh, ironically enough, seemingly going against four guys 
that the next time they hit a gym that they like, seems to be nowadays, will be the first time that they hit a gym that they like. What a classic encounter this was. Man, this fucking tables match sucked dick. How do you get the Dudleys in a table match and make it suck? Like, you've got them freaking pushing Braun Strowman like they're ever going to do anything with this fucking lame ass. News flash: just because a dude is big doesn't mean that the Slag Daddy's down with him or thinks that he's got potential. This big stiff walking around looking like my steroided version of Uncle Udo. Fucking A. Knowing goddamn good and well that three, four, six months down the road, he'll be fucking jobbing on damn superstars or working back down at NXT because we're preparing him for the singles push that doesn't happen and he ultimately gets future endeavor. We're pushing him like he fucking matters. They're pushing Braun Strowman more than they are Bray Wyatt. Does that make any fucking sense on God's green earth? And then when we get to this whole match, why are they fighting? And I don't care what type of story you want to use here. Why are they fighting? And furthermore, why are they fighting here? If anything, you've jumped the gun way, way, way too early. If you were going to do this and you were going to bring back the ECW players like the Rhinos and the Tommy Dreamers of the world to pair up with the Dudleys, then push that shit off to WrestleMania because at least then you would have given the Wyatt family something that could be somewhat interesting heading into WrestleMania, and you would actually give them a WrestleMania victory. Oh, man, imagine fucking that. If that's where you're going to go here, then why not just wait a few months and make it actually mean at least a little bit of something? And furthermore, again, when it comes down to the whole waste of time, not only was this match a waste of time because it was bad, it was a waste of time because the next night Raw's in Philadelphia, so they're just going to fucking sit there and basically do another Extreme Rules match between these two fucking teams again. Why watch the special event on the network? Why watch the pay-per-view on your TV when you just tune in the next night on Raw as part of your basic cable package and watch the match basically all fucking over again and it's actually better than the one that was on the featured event that you expect people to pay money to see? Holy shit. And then we get the IC title match between Dean Ambrose and Kevin Owens. This should be good. This should be something. But of course it's not. There's no special stipulation. It's just a standard wrestling match. These guys don't get a ton of time. I wouldn't exactly say it knocked anybody's fucking socks off. And now Dean Ambrose is the Intercontinental Champion. Why? Just why? Why put the strap on Owens just to have him basically immediately drop it? And why put the mid-card strap on freaking Ambrose to saddle him with that responsibility when he's been a long-reigning mid-card champion before and didn't do any fucking thing with it. Why would we sit there and put another mid-card strap on him when he frankly fucking doesn't need it? Now, granted, if you're going to sit there and say because you're spinning off Kevin Owens into something bigger, like a Brock Lesnar, or you're spinning him off into something bigger, like an Undertaker, then I get it. I don't think it's the right way to go. I don't think you should be anywhere close to getting to that territory or neighborhood. But nonetheless, if that's where you're going, so be it. But if you just did this to fucking do this to get some type of title change on this show, because if I look back now, yeah, it was the only title change on this freaking show, and I guess you had to have one. Just why? Just, you hadn't gotten to the point where Ambrose should have won the strap. It just speaks more to the lack of continuity and consistency and creativity of the WWE. And then you get to the Divas title match, and you've got two heels that are trying to out-heel each other, and it's fucking lame because neither one of them are very good heels. Paige sucks, period. Charlotte isn't much better, but at least she has her daddy in her fucking corner. So they're trying to develop a little bit of something there, but it seems kind of lame, too. So they're out there laming it up, and I'm sorry, this match was fucking lame. And bottom line, at the end of the day, this is largely the same old shit from the Divas division. Paige is face, and then she's heel, and now we're kind of face again. Charlotte's face, and then she's heel, and three months later, she'll be face again. It makes absolutely no fucking sense. This is why nobody, among other many reasons, this is why nobody in that division fucking gets over. You can take your Divas revolution and shove this up your ass. It is the same old shit. And again, as with so much else that was on this show, it was a colossal waste of my fucking time. Just hurry up and get to WrestleMania. Give me Sasha Banks versus Charlotte for the Divas title with Rick in Charlotte's corner and Snoop in Sasha's corner. Again, the build-up to WrestleMania. You want to talk about a Divas revolution. 
You've got Ric Flair and Snoop and all types of substances at play. God only knows what all is under the table, up their noses, and in their blood screams. Do you need any other fucking reason for that match to happen? Just one 15-minute segment of Snoop and Ric Flair. Holy shit. Sign me up for that. Because otherwise, this Divas Division, like it always, this is just a colossal waste of time. And I don't even know why the company even pretends like they care because they fucking don't. So why even bother having them if you don't fucking care? Because, again, they clearly don't. They will pretend to, but they really don't. And then we get to the biggest colossal waste of time on this show, which was the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between Roman Reigns and Sheamus. Oh, my God. This was a pay-per-view main event. Roman Reigns versus Sheamus. This was a pay-per-view main event for the biggest belt in your company, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. This was the main event of your pay-per-view for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, a pay-per-view, mind you, that had special stipulations where these guys could basically do whatever the fuck they wanted to each other and get away with it, making it damn near impossible to have a shitty match. And that these two guys went out there and, in my opinion, kind of stunk up the fucking joint. And yeah, you can sit there and talk about the dipshits in the crowd sitting there doing their hijacking and of shit and trying to chant for whatever, and they're fucking morons too, but who could blame them watching this crap? It was just bad. The match was bad. Running in the League of Nations was fucking bad. The finish was bad. And then afterwards, now it all becomes about, as I told you with Survivor Series, and if you ever doubt me again when it comes to the magnificence of the glory of the God, I swear on the fucking Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley, I will ugg all over your fucking face. Eat shit! I told you. I told you what Survivor Series was all about. Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I? At the end of the day, what was TLC all about? Wasting our fucking time for almost three hours just to get to the point where it becomes all about God's fucking WrestleMania match. God, the magnificence of him. The splendor of him. The glory of him. And now there's a possibility that he's going to get to wrestle in the main event of WrestleMania 32 for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Praise God! That's what it was. It was three hours to get to the story about building up Triple H's WrestleMania match. And this really ended up being a waste of time. When you look at what happened the next night on Raw, and if you don't know, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, they had Roman Reigns win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in the main event of Raw. So they didn't have them do it on the show they expect people to pay for. They came right back the next fucking night, had a match between these two guys, and that's when they decided to go with Roman Reigns. Was on Raw. So now the WWE is using their pay-per-views to set up their television. Doesn't that sound a lot like TNA? Doesn't that sound like the shit that we knocked them for for years? Well, I hope you're seeing the same things in WWE, and I hope you're knocking them the same, because this shit was fucking ridiculous. Inexcusable to give us this waste of time for three hours on Sunday night. It cannot possibly be that hard to create a solid wrestling show. It cannot possibly be that hard to give us a couple of good fucking stories going into a show. It cannot possibly be that hard to give us a couple of good fucking matches with a couple of interesting, compelling finishes featuring some interesting, compelling characters. But frankly, expecting the WWE to do anything other than that is an unnecessary burn of your energy and, frankly, a waste of fucking time. And at this point, why watch the pay-per-view? We can just watch Raw and see most of this shit all over again the next night. Stop wasting your time, I guess, and stop watching the fucking pay-per-views.